The mountain air was still and silent as the first rays of sun crept over the craggy ridgelines of the Sierra Nevadas. In a small, bright orange tent perched precariously on a narrow, rocky ledge, Sarah lay awake, listening to the gentle breathing of her climbing partner Alex in the sleeping bag beside her. She shivered, though not from the cold. Out here, exposed at over 10,000 feet with barely enough room to stretch out, sleep was elusive. Her mind raced instead with thoughts of the day ahead and the imposing rock wall that awaited them. Sarah glanced over at Alex, taking in his tousled, sandy hair peeking out from his mummy bag, his face relaxed in sleep. She envied his ability to rest soundly, even in the most perilous of positions. For Alex, a veteran climber, this was just another night out among the towering peaks and cliffs he knew so intimately. They had been climbing together for years. Ever since that first fateful day at the rock gym when Alex offered to mentor her. Since then, they had developed an unspoken language, communicating through gestures and glances. Sarah trusted him fully. She knew there was no one more qualified to lead her on this multi-pitch ascent they had dubbed the Seraph's Rise. A shrill cry pierced the silence, startling Sarah. Her heart raced as she recognized the call of a Stellar's Jay. Next to her, Alex stirred briefly, mumbling something incoherent before settling back into sleep. Sarah's gaze drifted to the narrow opening of the tent where the first pinkish gold rays of the sunrise had begun to wash over the breathtaking sweep of the valley. Soon they would set out to summit this legendary route. As the mountain came alive with light, Sarah tried to ignore the growing sense of dread in the pit of her stomach. There would be no turning back now. Sarah sat up quietly in her sleeping bag, trying not to wake Alex as she pulled on her boots and began lacing them up with trembling fingers. She shook her head, frustrated by her own nerves. She had climbed countless peaks with Alex over the years, pushing herself to the limits of her endurance on his encouragement. He always seemed to inherently understand her abilities, knowing when to coax her past doubt and when to call for a break. Together, they had summited routes far more technically challenging than the one that lay ahead. Yet something about the Seraph's rise filled Sarah with foreboding. She shivered again despite the cozy warmth of her fleece jacket, her mind turning to hushed conversations around campfires, whispers of experienced climbers who had mysteriously vanished on the very route they would soon tackle. Some blamed the unpredictability of the weather, Others speculated about loose and crumbling rock. But a few solemn voices hinted at something more sinister, an ancient and malevolent force that dwelt within the mountain itself. Sarah had always dismissed such talk as mere superstition. But here, suspended between earth and sky, the ominous warnings echoed in her mind. The tent rustled, and Alex emerged, his short, sandy hair sticking up at odd angles, and he grinned sleepily at Sarah as he pulled on his climbing harness. Ready for this? He asked. She wished she could match his enthusiasm. I guess so, Sarah replied, hoping the gnawing doubt in her gut would fade with the ascent. Alex just smiled and squeezed her shoulder reassuringly. Soon the cliffs awaited. Pointing her headlamp at the ground, Sarah forced herself forward into the rocky darkness. Sarah followed closely behind Alex as they picked their way up the steep, uneven terrain. Her headlamp illuminated a narrow circle of lichen-speckled rock and little else. She tried to focus on placing one foot steadily in front of the other, avoiding loose stones that could spell disaster. In the inky blackness, she grasped onto the comfort of Alex's presence, his silhouette barely discernible ahead. She tracked his movements, mimicking his steps and handholds. Here, in his element, he moved with practiced grace, finding secure grips along the cliffside. They climbed slowly, but steadily, the hours and pitches blending together. As the eastern sky lightened from black to deep cobalt, Sarah glanced up to see Alex's smiling face peering down at her from an outcrop. First belay point, he called out triumphantly. 
Sarah felt a swell of relief and accomplishment, one pitch down without incident. Perhaps this wouldn't be as harrowing as she had imagined. She clambered up beside Alex onto the relatively spacious ledge, glad for a respite. As she sank gratefully to her knees, the rising sun at last crested the distant peaks in a dazzling burst of light. For a moment, the spectacle took Sarah's breath away, the climbing dread ebbing as quickly as it had come. Not too bad, eh? said Alex. Sarah nodded, the earlier ominous feeling almost forgotten. She gazed out at the valleys and rivers unfolding below them in intricate patterns, like a map coming to life. With the sunlight warming her face, her confidence grew. They would reach the summit together, as they always had. What did she have to fear? Newly invigorated by the sunrise, Sarah and Alex pressed onward and upward, the rock wall looming larger with each step. As Alex led the way, Sarah fell into the familiar rhythm of their climb. She focused on the placement of her hands and feet, each movement bringing her closer to the sky. The morning light cast the cliff face in sharp relief, alternating patches of sun-warmed stone and pockets of cool shadow. Sarah traced the intricate patterns of cracks and ridges, memorizing the landscape. She spotted a lone whitebark pine clinging stubbornly to the nearly vertical slope, its twisted branches testament to a lifetime of battling the elements. The higher they climbed, the more Sarah's doubts were swept away on the mountain breeze. She imagined the pride and joy that would come with topping out onto the summit ridge, the seraph's wings spread gloriously on either side. No supernatural force could stop them from conquering this peak together. Near noon, Alex paused at a narrow notch in the rock to set another anchor. As Sarah pulled herself up beside him, she noted his furrowed brow for the first time that day. Following his gaze, she spotted a dark bank of clouds gathering over the distant peaks. A cold gust confirmed the changing weather. Alex turned to Sarah, resolve glinting in his blue eyes. We're close, he said. If we pick up the pace, I think we can still beat the storm. Sarah nodded, fresh adrenaline already beginning to pump through her veins. She would not fail with the summit in reach. Alex gave her shoulder a quick squeeze, then turned to continue, pushing ever skyward. Sarah steeled herself and followed into the growing gloom. Sarah tried not to watch as the clouds rolled in, swallowing up the mountaintops one by one in a sea of gray. She kept her eyes fixed on Alex's feet instead, mimicking his steps exactly, trying not to dwell on their precarious position. The wind picked up velocity until it was buffeting them relentlessly, threatening to throw them off balance. Sarah's hair lashed at her cheeks as she bent her head low and fought for each handhold. Their pace slowed, but Alex pressed on doggedly, calling encouragement over his shoulder. Just a few more pitches, he shouted above the gale. We're close now! Sarah nodded though she could no longer make out the summit through the swirling fog. She trusted Alex to navigate through the gathering tempest. Doubt resurfaced, but she pushed it down, focusing everything she had on the rock in front of her. With numb, trembling fingers, she followed Alex up a vertical crack, icy droplets of rain and sleet pelting her back. Just as she pulled herself over the lip, a deafening crack of thunder exploded directly overhead. She cried out in surprise and horror as a blinding bolt of lightning split the sky. In that flash, Sarah saw that Alex had already moved on. Blinking away the purple afterimage, she scrambled to catch up, her lungs burning as ominous rumbles echoed all around them. She slipped on slick rock but quickly regained her grip, dragging herself upward by sheer force of will. They were so close now, just beyond her field of vision. When her hand finally grasped the cold metal of Alex's anchor, a wave of relief washed over her. She had made it. They would summit together after all, just as she had imagined. Gripping tight, she pulled herself up towards Alex's waiting hand. Sarah grasped Alex's outstretched hand, expecting to feel his strong grip pull her up beside him. Instead, her stomach dropped as her fingers closed around... Nothing. 
Sarah's cry of alarm was lost in a peal of thunder as she fruitlessly clutched at the empty air. Eyes wide with confusion and fear, she frantically scanned the narrow ledge for any sign of Alex. Only his anchor remained, still fixed firmly in place. Sarah's mind reeled as she double and triple checked her harness, seeking any possibility that she had simply become unclipped from her partner. But the rope connecting them was intact, pulled taut from her weight, yet disappearing into the swirling mist above. Alex! Sarah screamed, panic rising within her. She yanked hard on the line between them, desperately trying to elicit some response. Had he fallen, been struck by lightning? But the rope remained stubbornly, impossibly taut. He had simply vanished. Numb with shock, Sarah hauled herself onto the ledge, limbs shaking violently as adrenaline coursed through her. She groped along the cliffside, searching for a handhold, a boot, some sign that Alex waited just out of sight. But her hands met only crumbling rock, slick with rain. Alex, please, she cried again, blinking against the freezing downpour. Thunder rumbled menacingly overhead. Ignoring it, she stumbled forward, following the rope upward into the dense, opaque fog. She called his name between sobs until her voice was raw and cracked. The line pulled her onward into nothingness. They're ahead. Had that been movement? A flash of color through the gloom. Heart thudding, Sarah hurried recklessly toward it, hope against hope. But there was only more endless, empty gray. Alex was gone without a trace, and she was alone in the storm. Sarah's mind reeled as she stared at the taut rope disappearing into the swirling fog. Alex's baffling vanishing act made no sense, defying reason or explanation. But her shocked stupor could not last long. Fighting down her rising panic, Sarah knew she needed help, and fast. Fumbling with numb, trembling fingers, she retrieved her satellite phone and dialed the ranger station's emergency line. Static crackled on the line, but at last she was able to provide her coordinates and explain the situation in a rush of words. Alex was gone without a trace, no signs of falling or injury. Yes, she had checked all equipment and connections. No, there were no gaps in the Bailey line, no possible way he could have slipped free. Please, you have to get a search party out here right now. Shouting over the wind, Sarah provided what few details she could before losing the tenuous connection. Now there was nothing to do but wait, secured to this windswept precipice. She pulled her parka tighter against the chill. Would they even believe her? She could hardly believe it herself. Over the next agonizing hours, Sarah scanned the slopes below for any sign of searchers but she saw only the mist swirling around the mountainside, occasional glimpses of the valley floor far below peering through its ghostly veil. No matter how many times she shouted Alex's name, only the winded echoed back. At long last, the thumping blades of a helicopter cracked the storm's monotonous drone. Shielding her eyes against the gale, Sarah spotted it descending through the clouds. She waved frantically, almost sobbing with relief, but that relief curdled into confusion and horror as the first rescuers approached and Alex's line failed to reappear. He remained vanished, with no end to the rope that bound them. Sarah could barely process the flurry of activity that followed. Rescue workers swarmed the cliffside, combing every inch, shouting into radios. Sarah was ushered into the helicopter and flown down to base camp where a team of rangers waited to question her. In a daze, she recounted everything she could remember. The storm rolling in, the lightning strike, pulling herself up to Alex's anchored rope only to find him gone without a trace. The rangers exchanged uneasy glances as she described following the taut line up into the fog in vain. She could read the skepticism in their eyes. Over the next 48 hours, the mountains swarmed with search parties intent on finding some evidence of Alex or his body. They rappelled down every crevasse, sent drones over ridges, scoured nearby slopes. But as the hours wore on, a grim reality set in. There was simply no sign of him anywhere. 
When the last rescue team descended defeated down the mountainside, Sarah felt herself plunging into a nightmare. She cornered the lead ranger as he headed wearily to his truck. You can't give up, she pleaded, voice breaking. He's still out there, I know it. The ranger just shook his head, eyes full of pity. We've searched everywhere possible. I'm sorry, miss, but your friend is gone. The mountain has him now. As he drove off, Sarah collapsed to her knees in the gravel, Alex's last words echoing in her mind. We're close now. She had failed him, and the mountain had claimed him. She screamed into the empty darkness until her voice gave out. Alex was gone forever on the Seraph's rise. In the weeks following Alex's disappearance, Sarah withdrew into herself, haunted by his absence. She replayed every detail of their climb again and again, desperate for some clue, some thread that could unravel the mystery. Friends tried to comfort her, suggesting rational explanations. A lightning strike, a clifftop collapse, a freak avalanche burying Alex without a trace. But Sarah knew in her soul something far stranger and more sinister had transpired. Late at night she poured over accounts of other climbers lost in the Sierra Nevadas, vanishings written off as accidents or exposure. She now saw patterns emerging. The strangeness of bodies never being recovered, of partners and gear left inexplicably intact. A dark legend seemed to shroud the high peaks, hinting at forces beyond understanding. By day, Sarah wandered the base trails like a specter, frightening other hikers with her gaunt appearance and wild eyes. She questioned everyone relentlessly about the mountain's past, believing somewhere within its history lay the key to Alex's fate. At night, her dreams placed her back on that cliffside, following the rope into oblivion. Increasingly obsessed, Sarah drove to the mountain every weekend, staring up at its indifferent facade for hours on end. The peak had claimed Alex, and now called inexorably to her. She imagined she heard his voice sometimes, echoing down from the rocks, stirring her to action. One chill morning as the first rays of light hit the summit, Sarah shouldered her gear and began hiking, a determined fire blazing in her eyes. She would have answers or join Alex in eternity. The mountain awaited. Alexandra stood at the base of the towering cliff face known as the No-Fall Zone, her eyes tracing the sheer granite wall that scraped the sky overhead. A bone-chilling wind whipped against her faded jacket as she drew a deep breath, trying to settle the nervous flutter in her stomach. This climb was about more than conquering the notoriously treacherous route that had claimed so many. It was about proving to herself that she could overcome the secret fear of heights that had lurked within since a childhood fall from a treehouse. And it was about honoring the memory of her mentor, Jonas, who had perished attempting this very climb. Jonas had helped Alexandra manage that fear over the years and nurture her natural talent for climbing. His advice always came back to trusting herself and respecting the wisdom of the mountain. She hoped she could live up to his legacy today. It had taken intense training, hundreds of hours scaling smaller peaks near and far, and practicing on simulated rock walls and terrain to get Alexandra to this moment. She had planned and prepared for months to be ready for the no-fall zone's unique challenges. The sheer vertical drops, slippery handholds, and heart-pounding exposure. Looking up at the grim rock face, she knew a long mental and physical battle lay ahead. But she was as ready as she could be. Her muscles were stretched and warm. Her gear was meticulously checked and rechecked. Her chalk bag and shoes were within easy reach. All that was left was to confront the mountain's perils and her own inner doubts that surfaced already, creeping in like the surrounding mist. This climb was about more than reaching the summit. It was about growth and honor. It was about staring down fear itself. Alexandra took one last deep breath, steeled her nerves, and began the fateful climb. 
The first hundred vertical feet went relatively smoothly as Alexandra established a steady rhythm, her calloused fingers finding holds and her toned calves wedging into cracks in the sheer rock face. She focused on keeping her breathing slow and deep, channeling the adrenaline surge into fluid movements just as Jonas had trained her. The coarse granite was like ice under her fingertips as she traversed the wall. Her shoulders burned as she reached for handhold after handhold, pulling herself up the impossible angle, squinting to find ragged edges for her toes amid the sea of gray stone. The winding valley spread out far below her, the trees and boulders shrinking to dots. About an hour into her intense climb, Alexandra eased onto a narrow ledge to catch her breath and take in the stunning view. Up here, she felt like she could see the whole world spread before her. Her pulse continued racing, only partly from physical exertion. The thrill of clinging solo to the mighty cliff face hundreds of feet in the air stirred a powerful mix of exhilaration and fear in her core. She felt a pang in her heart thinking of Jonas, wondering if he had felt that same fusion of joy and trepidation at this point in his fateful climb years ago. After some trail mix and a few swigs of water, she continued on, using her legs to propel herself upward in a graceful, controlled series of movements, stepping up, pressing in, angling her body just so. She had to maintain razor-sharp focus. The afternoon sun had started shifting, throwing deceptive shadows across the crags and cracks. Sweat trickled down her neck as her fingers suddenly cramped, a sharp stabbing sensation shooting through her forearm. Alexandra froze, willing her hand to relax its vice-like grip. Breathe. Listen. Feel. She repeated Jonas's mantra until the pain subsided and her panic eased. Carefully, she flexed her fingers before reaching for the next slender hold, each tiny movement utterly deliberate. About 300 feet up the sheer rock face, she encountered Anton, attempting to sprint recklessly up and down the notorious no-fall zone in record time just for thrills. He tore past her in a blur, hurling arrogant insults about the so-called dangers. Alexandra tuned him out, recalling Jonas's words. Listen to the mountain, feel what it's telling you. She had to trust her hard-earned instincts and skills, not feed off Anton's reckless bravado. Eyes scanning the cliff, she spotted a protruding rock and stretched for it. Her shoulders burned, every muscle engaged, as she clung tight until she could work her feet across the divide. The battle was far from over. Alexandra steeled herself and climbed on. Alexandra was scanning the rock face for her next handhold when a blood-curdling shout snapped her focus upward. About 50 feet above, Anton had fallen and was now clinging to a narrow, crumbling ledge, blood streaming down his chalk-white face. Alexandra's first instinct was to try to help, but she quickly realized that any move toward him would be suicidal. Hanging immobilized on the sheer cliff, all she could do was watch helplessly as a rescue helicopter arrived, its deafening rotors drowning out the rugged valley. A rescuer was slowly lowered down to Anton on a cable, Alexandra cringed as she imagined herself in his position, critically injured, unable to move, with only a thin ledge separating her from a plunging fall. The tense rescue efforts disrupted Alexandra's climbing rhythm. Her heart slammed against her ribs as the reality of the route's dangers fully sank in. One tragic misstep, one slip, and even the strongest climber could end up broken and bleeding high on the rocks. Alexandra closed her eyes, willing herself to mentally regroup despite the unfolding crisis just above her. She thought of what Jonas would tell her if he were here. Stay laser-focused. Trust your skills completely. Don't let fear overpower you. She repeated this mantra as she took a few deep breaths, but the images of Anton's mangled body invaded her mind, threatening to shake her confidence. This route demanded ultimate respect each step of the way. Caution, skill and preparation only went so far. Up here on the exposed rock face, even experts were always one fleeting lapse from disaster. Alexandra realized she couldn't take anything for granted, even with all her intense training. Out here, 
there were no true guarantees, only her experience, endurance, and iron will to keep her alive. Exhaling deeply, Alexandra steeled herself and slowly resumed her ascent, keenly aware that her greatest challenge still lay ahead. As Alexandra progressed higher up the rock face, the climb became exponentially more challenging. The physical and mental strain began to stir up the familiar undercurrent of fear and self-doubt within her. The sheer verticality meant that each handhold had to be perfect or else calamity awaited. Her fingers cramped and her toes numbly sought out the smallest ridges in the granite. Alexandra's nerves fired relentlessly as she reached again and again across perilous gaps, willing her muscles to keep up with her mind's demands. Isolation started to become a factor. Up here, over 500 feet in the air, she was utterly alone. Just Alexandra and the mountain. The occasional gusts of wind and scrape of her shoes against stone were her only companions. In the deafening silence, her thoughts came into harsh focus. Why was she doing this? Did she really need to prove anything by taking such a huge risk? Alexandra battled against the creeping doubts, questioning her motivations and her capabilities. She glanced down at the falling away valleys, everything swimming in a rising vertigo. Closing her eyes, she was suddenly a child again, tumbling from that treehouse, helpless and scared. No. She couldn't retreat into the past. Focus. She inhaled the bracing air, letting it center her. Look ahead. Feel the rock under your hands, she told herself. Trust that you have prepared for this. Alexandra repeated these mantras, trying to override the fears. But the higher she climbed, the more that underlying dread bubbled up from deep inside, threatening to defeat her. This was the true test not just pushing through physical burn, but facing down the demons within. Jonas's voice seemed to whisper on the wind. You belong here. Don't surrender. Keep climbing. Gathering her resolve, Alexandra crept onward and upward, wary of what still lay ahead on this increasingly treacherous ascent. Hand over hand, foot over foot, Alexandra climbed onward and upward. As she neared the summit, the most difficult section loomed ahead, the crux, which had turned back many others and claimed poor Jonas's life. The rock face here became nearly vertical, requiring dynamic movements between minuscule holds. Alexandra's lungs burned as she pushed through the last hundred feet. The exposure was paralyzing this high up, thousands of feet of air on all sides. Moving sideways along an inch-wide seam in the granite, her toes slipped. A rush of panic as she clawed for any grip, finally hugging tight to the rock face. The terror of almost plummeting flooded her body, hyperventilating, dangling by her hands and feet. She wanted it to end. But there was no way down except by her own sheer will. Closing her eyes, she saw flashes, the ground spinning up at her as a girl from the treehouse. Anton's bloodied face, Jonas disappearing into the void on this very section. At this moment, giving up would mean certain death. Breathe, she told herself. Alexandra drew deep breaths until her pulse slowed. She thought of her training, all the weeks preparing specifically for this crux. She could do this, hand over hand, don't rush, trust yourself. Inching along, her toes slipped again on the glass-smooth rock, but this time her hands held strong. The jolt shook her to her core. She was utterly exhausted, every muscle quivering, her mind blotted by fear. But she was so close. Gathering every bit of courage left, Alexandra made her way through the harrowing crux. With one final heave, she pulled herself onto the peak and collapsed. At the precipice of triumph, Alexandra's lungs embraced the thin alpine air like a long-lost lover, her heartbeat drumming in her ears in sync with the mountain's ancient rhythm. As she clambered over the last barrier of rock and earth, the expanse of the world below greeted her, a conqueror not of the mountain, but of her inner chasm of dread. 
the once menacing gales that buffeted the craggy faces now caressed her cheeks, whispering secrets of resilience known only to those who dare to ascend into the domain of the gods. With her victory over the no-fall zone, Alexandra found herself cradled in a euphoria that she had never known. Her breaths, once shallow with trepidation, now came deep and full, each inhale a gust of freedom, each exhale a gust of the past limitations blowing away into the ether. For an everlasting moment, as she stood at the summit's zenith, the very idea of a no-fall zone was reframed in her mind's eye. It wasn't about the absence of falling, but rather about the presence of enduring. Her eyelids lifted to reveal a vault of blue, limitless and clear, a stark contrast to the tumultuous gray that had once filled her with dread. In that vast serenity, she whispered a hushed homage to her mentor, the late harbinger of courage, who had once walked these same paths. It wasn't just the mountain's treacherous paths that she had navigated, but also her own apprehensions that had often strangled her will. The descent, a mirror yet antithesis of the climb, demanded a different kind of metal. With the mountain's pinnacle behind her, Alexandra retraced her steps, each one a descent into contemplation, a downward journey graced with the lightness of fulfillment. The rescue team, now in the late stages of their grim work, served as a grim reflection of the day's formidable realities. There, amidst the solemnity, lay the overconfident climber, ensnared by the gravity he had once scoffed at, his eyes a tableau of crushed arrogance and newfound reverence. In his gaze, Alexandra saw the vestiges of her own erstwhile terror, now transmuted into respect for the mountain's untamed sovereignty. She learned of his fate, survival, yes, but at the cost of the mobility that had defined him. Their exchange was mute, the silence speaking volumes more than any commiseration could. With her pack secured and the mountain's shadow stretching long and ominous, Alexandra offered a final, lingering gaze to the summit. That rocky spire had imparted an unspoken sagacity, a deep-seated reverence for the mountain, an understanding of its impassive might, and a profound humility before the vastness of nature. Each step away from the no-fall zone was a step within a newfound march, a stride resounding with a harmony that wove respect and fear into a tapestry of wisdom. The mountain had schooled her in a doctrine no climbing manual could impart, the sanctity of the ascent and the deference it implored. And so, with the lessons of the mountain indelibly etched into her very being, Alexandra walked away from the no-fall zone, her spirit imprinted not just with the euphoria of her ascent, but with a deep, unshakable veneration for the fine balance between the fear that safeguards and the fear that confines. In the deepest reaches of Alexandra's heart, the true no-fall zone was a sanctuary, a bastion of the spirit, not a physical locale, but an internal bastion, ever awaiting her courage. There, in that sanctuary, she understood that the sky was not a limit, but a beginning, a canvas for the bravery etched into her soul. For in the embrace of the climber, the no-fall zone transformed. It was not merely a climb, but a narrative of self-discovery, an internal peak forever beckoning to be scaled, where respect and fear danced in an eternal embrace, guiding her to a summit beyond the skies.